Converting a single home into a duplex. Sounds easy, right? There's a lot of work that goes into this kind of project. More than you think. Corey will show you the basics on what you'll need to make your multi-unit building an inspection success. I'm Danielle and welcome to Decor Homes. Hi there, Corey from Decor Homes here. Have you ever considered converting a single home into a duplex and wondered, what do I have to do to do this? Well, here, let me show you a couple of things. We have for a client a nice little home that we're trying to convert a, a semi into a duplex. Figure, right? Splitting a already split up home in half. Crazy. This is what we're doing. Before doing any type of framing, what you always need to consider is this continuous fire break. Continuous fire break basically means that you have to put a 5 eighths drywall sill above your ceiling. Uh, it could even be half inch uh, depending on different codes, but we just put 5 eighths that way we're not messing around. All of this that we framed, this was all existing wall, no drywall sill. This is all the new wall. See the drywall sill under all of this? If you pull a permit and you get your framing done and you realize, man, I forgot to put my drywall sill. You know, what's going to happen is you're going to have to take all your pieces. You're going to have to have to cut five eighths. Then you're going to have to cut the nails here. You're going to have to cut your top plate off and you're going to have to drop everything down. Okay. This is a common error. Not very many people when they're framing, they're not cutting a drywall sill to go above their framing unless they're doing a multi-unit building. This is called a fire break. You need this fire break everywhere. Well, what else do you need? You need this sound attenuating insulation. Okay, rock saw, uh, whatever type of product you have. Basically, it's this gray insulation or this yellowish gray tan color insulation. It's super sound resistant and it's also fire resistant. What's another couple of things that we need to do? Well, you need to separate your water from upstairs to downstairs. So here it is. Upstairs cold. Downstairs cold. So there's lots of, so we can actually control the upstairs water from the downstairs. Well, what else do we need? We actually need to install resilient channel. Resilient channel uh, helps to reduce the sound transference from upstairs to downstairs. And when we're talking about resilient channel, we actually need resilient channel on all adjacent walls to any other living space. In the basement, we use resilient channel on the ceiling but the resilient channel also needs to be carried throughout the walls of the upper staircase. When people are running around, this is what you, what you could avoid. You have to drop all of your electrical boxes down because the resilient channel is half inch and then there's also 5 eighths drywall. So when you're separating units, you need type X drywall. This is special fire rated drywall. It's 5 eighths of an inch. A regular drywall is half inch, okay? 37 pounds, half inch drywall. Type X, I want to say like somewhere between like 70 pounds or 65, 75 pounds. So they're heavy. They come two at a time, carry one at a time, bring your friends. What's another thing we got to do? We got to create a cavity for all of our heat ducts. So these cavities, they're actually 5 8 drywall, top, bottom, sides, everywhere. If you look over here, we have to push the drywall into this cavity which was three four feet deep and then we had to seal it with this special caulking used for sealing joints like we couldn't even fit our arm in there we had to caulk alongside the edge of a piece of wood and then just stick it in there it wasn't graceful but it got the job done another item is having a steel door separating the two units we removed the door jam completely from this door frame and we're gonna have to build this with a metal door okay this is with a 30 minute fire resistance rating this will have to have a metal door which is another item that we require when we're converting a single home into a duplex well what else do we need let's have a look did you know that any pipe greater than two inches has to have a fire collar around it? This is a special fire collar that goes around all of those pipes and creates a nice seal and prevents fires from being able to squeeze through. Pretty cool. So we need two of these and look where we need to install them. We need to install one right here around this guy, which is our toilet from upstairs. And we need to install one more around this one. 
So all of the plumbing had to be modified and dropped down a little bit just so that it would give us enough space to be able to put one of these guys on. This is gonna be quite the challenge because this is very tight areas and then we need to build down the ceiling. It's gonna require tricky drywall just to be able to get this guy on. So the planning process is half the battle. These don't quite seem like a big deal. This one comes from Hilti. Hilti makes a great product no matter what they build. So we require two for this house in those locations. If we fail to include these, the building inspector would come in and tell us that we failed our fire separation inspection. Lastly, one of the main things that you require when converting a single home into a duplex is interconnected fire alarms. You need one CO2 and fire alarm uh, outside of the bedrooms, okay? This one qualifies for that. Then inside each bedroom, we need one fire alarm for each room. Here's one here. It's not wired yet because once dry, fire alarms can be a little finicky. If you put the fire alarms in too early and you do drywall, the drywall dust can actually go inside the fire alarm and hinder its ability to do the job it's supposed to do. Here's our other fire alarm right here. These are all interconnected uh, all the way up through upstairs. Also, when you have a multi-unit building, every unit needs access to their own electrical panel. That way, if anything goes wrong inside their house, they could just go turn it off, turn it on, and that's the way it is, okay? In multi-unit buildings, in apartment buildings, people have their own panel, but there's a main breaker for the entire floor. Uh, so the main things that you really have to focus on is we got Encasing all the uh, all the HVAC, we have all of the drywall sills, so you need your continuous fire break, the fire collar, the fire rated caulking inside here. So, and there's different caulking for plumbing pipes as well as drywall. So you have to do your research. The interconnected fire alarms, that's a biggie. A resilient channel. We have. Uh, the insulation. You also need to separate your entrance. So you need a metal door. They have a 30 minute fire break and the metal door has a metal frame. You need to separate your water from upstairs to downstairs. Every unit needs access to their own electrical panel. This is important. If you want to pull a permit and do a job correctly, this is what, likely what you're going to run into. Before you take on a job, do your research, get the proper quotes, and make sure you're not running into issues. Thanks for watching. You made it to the end. Make sure you check out our other videos and subscribe. See you next time.